appropriate assessment of growth is essential to identify and interpret growth disorders and therefore a structured and a correct methodology should be uh, should be adapted while assessing the growth parameters of a given child now when should we monitor growth is a major question and uh, this was uh, addressed in a very uh, clear cut fashion by the iap growth monitoring guidelines 2007 which clearly mentions that every child should be measured at birth in which key parameter should include a birth weight and birth weight is a very important parameter because it not only gives information about the size at birth it also has multiple implications in terms of long term outcome and is a very important outcome most of us are doing birth weight but unfortunately birth length and head circumference are parameters which are not commonly done which should always be recorded at birth because they give us more information about the type of growth failure particularly if you have a child who has a small for gestational age looking into the birth length would become quite important from a long term perspective into whether it is a intrinsic pathology or an extrinsic pathology because of environmental causes one very important parameter which has to be looked at birth is the stretched penile length and stretched penile length is measured using a transparent scale which is placed at the pubic symphysis the penis should ideally be have a retracted prepuce and should be stretched to the point of maximum resistance and to look at stretched penile length why is it important to look at stretched penile length at newborn period is because this could be a marker for micro penis that is a situation in which the stretched penile length is less than 1.8 cm which may be a only indicator of a endocrine pathology like hypoparathyroidism which may predispose that particular individual to hypoglycemic seizures and identification of micropenis in this setting can result in identification of hypoparathyroidism resulting in prevention of this deadly complication moreover disorders of sexual differentiation would be identified if we are actually looking and measuring the actual stretched penile length subsequently it has been advised that uh, growth measurements should include weight length and head circumference during the routine immunization visits and at 6 months following which they should at least be monitored every 6 monthly between 3 to 8 years 6 monthly assessment should be continued particularly for both weight and height and they should be plotted on a particular growth chart which includes the parental expectation it's extremely important to look at sexual maturity rating from 6 years onwards particularly in the case of girls because of the possibility of precocious puberty and body mass index in view of increasing obesity in this setting from 8 to 18 years of age if a child is having normal growth pattern annual assessment of weight height body mass index and sexual maturity rating is sufficient Now what are the two major aspects to look at in terms of growth include linear growth and adiposity. Talking about linear growth the issue as to whether we have to measure a length or height would depend upon the age and the particular size of the individual. So in general for any child who is less than 2 years of age and whose length is less than 90 cm it's the length which is more appropriate and after that age height should be considered. when we are interpreting length versus height one parameter which needs to be remembered is that length is always 2 cm more as compared to height because this would involve stretching of the intervertebral disc which will give a longer situation so when we are transitioning from length to height measurements particularly at around 2 years of age in the initial phase there could be a discrepancy in assessment which should not be thought of as a cause of growth failure or a cause of concern in that perspective now we all know about steps for health ma- length manage- measurement the ideal situation is to have two observers using an infantometer and the child's head should actually be kept against the headboard with supine posture and eyes looking straight and a hard board should be pressed towards the leg to actually measure the exact length what about height measurement and it should ideally be done using a stereometer with a headrest the child should actually remove all the shoes and socks the frankfurt plane which is the plane which is joining the bi auricular canal to the external auditory meatus should be kept 
horizontal and the buttock, occiput and head should be rested against the wall. Now wherever we are assessing growth, we should always look at the parental expectation and that's where target height comes into the picture. And target height is derived from the height of both parents. So first we have to calculate the mid parental height, which is father's height plus mother's height divided by two. And then for boys, we have to add 6.5 centimeters and girls subtract 6.5 centimeters to get the exact target height for that particular individual. Now, where does this figure of 6.5 centimeters come from? The average difference between an adult male and adult female across most cultures is around 13 centimeters. And therefore, the 6.5 centimeters is considered to be a ball mark as far as those parameters are concerned. And this is then converted into a range of plus minus 6 centimeters, which is the range for target height. So we'll just run through this example of a 12 year old girl whose mother is 150 centimeters and father is 163 centimeters. What is the target height range? And what we see is that mid parental height is equals to 150 plus 163 divided by two, which becomes 156.5 centimeters. And the target height in this setting, therefore for a girl would be subtracting 6.5 centimeters becomes 150. And then the target height range would be 150 plus minus 6 centimeters, which is 144 to 156 centimeter. Now, when we talk about growth, we are not just talking about a single assessment. We are talking about a longitudinal assessment as well. So if you're really looking at just the height of the child at that particular time point, it's like looking at a snapshot or a simple picture. Well, when you're talking about longitudinal growth, we're talking about growth velocity. We are actually looking at the whole running movie which is going on and in that regard growth velocity becomes extremely important to assess and in most situations extensive workup for growth disorder should be done only after growth velocity has been monitored. Growth velocity should be monitored periodically for a period of at least 6 to 12 months because there are always some error of at least 2 millimeters in terms of growth assessment. So if the period of growth velocity monitoring is for 2 months that two millimeters would actually be exaggerated to around one, one and a half centimeters per year, which makes a huge difference as far as growth velocity is concerned. So when should we be really bothered about growth velocity? So if a child in the first two years is growing less than seven centimeters per year, between three to four less than six centimeters per year, and subsequently less than four centimeters per year is the time when we really need to be concerned and bothered about their growth velocity percentile charts which are available which we'll discuss as far as the growth chart assessment is concerned. <clears throat> so we discussed about linear growth. The next issue is about uh, assessment of adiposity and which is becoming extremely important given the setting of uh, significant enhancement in the rates of uh, pediatric obesity. So adiposity assessment we are focusing about increased fat and not just weight because we are concerned about increase in fat mass which is relative to other aspects of body. So for that the best marker for the first two years of age is weight for height and beyond that it is the body mass index which should be considered. Waist circumference is a good marker as far as abdominal obesity is concerned and it is clearly emerged that abdominal obesity is a significant risk factor as far as the long-term complications are concerned and particularly the metabolic complications are concerned of obesity. Skin fold thickness is not routinely recommended for clinical practice and should be reserved for research purposes. So how do we calculate body mass index? We very well know that body mass index equals weight in kg divided by height upon meter square and this should be interpreted with regards to the percentiles for the particular age and gender and individuals who have a BMI more than 85th percentile should be considered overweight, while those with BMI more than 95th percentile are considered obesity. Waist circumference is now emerging as a significant parameter to assess, particularly in the setting of uh, childhood obesity. And now we have data from Indian children which shows that waist circumference above 70th to 75th percentile should be a cause of concern in terms of evaluation. 